this evening for the pleasure of their Lordship Sri Sigornitai. <coughs> we are going to read from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhyalila, chapter 3, text number 6. Mm. So this verse uh, appears in Chaitanya Charitamrita, although originally it is from Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is a very important verse from the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> so let's repeat this together. It's of the purport. So it will go faster. Okay? Alright. So in the first paragraph of this purport, Srila Prabhupada writes that um, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says that to accept sannyas is actually required in devotional service. Anyone who is a devotee must be a sannyasi. Uh, so, uh, there is a, uh, uh, of course, an external uh, uh, way of assuming the order of sannyas by external appearance. But simply the dress that does not constitute real sannyas. Srila mm. Prabhupada writes here that the main business of a sannyasi is to devote his life completely to the service of Mukunda, Krishna. One who works devotedly for the satisfaction of Krishna is a sannyasi. The dress is not sannyas, but the attitude of service to Krishna is. So, the, in the Vaishnava sannyas, the symbol is the tree dandi. So, this tree danda is composed of, it uh, consists of actually four bamboo rods. There's the one, which is called the ekadanda, which represents the soul which the Mayavadis also have. But the three other rods uh, mean that the body, the mind, and the words, as well as the soul, are all dedicated to the lotus feet of Lord Mukunda. Mm. So, Mayavari Sanyas is therefore incomplete. Mm. Because they uh, think simply by understanding that I am soul, that that is Sanyas. Aham Brahmasmi. But uh, the soul uh, acts 
through body, mind, and words. The soul is active. Huh? So if body, mind, and words are uh, left engaged in the material nature, then actually one cannot really understand himself to be soul. Because the consciousness of the soul will be focused through body, mind and words upon matter. And thus the follower of this philosophy will uh, be deluded. By his association with material nature. Even though he may say, Tatvamasi, that I, the soul, am the same as the Supreme Soul, I am God. But what is this sameness? You are in Maya. <laughs> so, there is sameness, yes, but there is difference, and this they don't recognize. <laughs> the difference is, is that unless we serve Krishna, the Supreme Soul, Param Brahman, uh, we will be covered by the material energy. Although we are spirit, just like Krishna, we are. We have the same quality. So, Srila Prabhupada concludes this purport by quoting a very well-known verse uh, by Srila Rupa Goswami from the Upadesh Amrita. Vacho Vegam, Manasakroda Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udarapasta Vegam, Etan Vega, Yovishahita Dira, Sarvam Apiman, Pritivim Sasisha. You can just read the translation. So this is the real sannyasi. His body, mind, words, everything are fixed in devotional service. Hmm? Thus, body, mind, words, these six uh, pushing agents, they're called vegam. Uh, they push, they push us. But when they're engaged in Krishna's service, they're under Krishna's control. <laughs> Hmm? Thus we cannot be pushed into material sinful activity by these senses, minds, words. Mm -hmm. So, now, this verse on the board is spoken by, in Srimad Bhagavatam, by a Brahmana who is known as the Avanti Brahmana. means he comes from the city, uh, an ancient city known as Avantipura. So this Brahmana was born into all advantages, all material advantages. Uh, of course, he's being a Brahmana, he's born in good family. Uh, and also he had wealth. He had wealth, he had fame. He was very well situated. 
направо за много добре от този вемик. Всяка една гледна точка е много бил роден като правена и много богатство също. But then, uh, later on in life, <coughs> he lost everything. And his uh, relatives, they all turned against him. They drove him out of the house. Uh, you are useless. You have lost all the wealth. You are no longer providing for us. Get out. Mm-hmm. And so the this Brahmana was wandering homeless. And wherever he would go, people would insult him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would try to beg and people would laugh at him. Who is this rascal disguised as a sadhu begging? Get out! And if he did manage to beg something to eat, he would sit down someplace uh, to take it. Hare Krishna. But then some envious person would pass urine onto the food. So <laughs> he was <laughs> he was always being criticized and ostracized. You know the word ostracize? Ostracize. Uh, ostracize means to be shut out. Shut out of society. Wherever he would go. Mm. So at first, uh, this was all very painful for him. But then, he began to see it as Krishna's mercy. That Krishna has taken away everything else uh, except his own two lotus feet. Those are my only shelter. So therefore, you hear, you see in this verse, Aham tarishami turantaparam tamo mukundangri nishevi yaiva that I shall cross over this insurmountable ocean of existence by being firmly fixed in the service of the lotus feet of Krishna. This became his determination. He was he actually became completely satisfied understanding that there is nothing in this world for me to enjoy or possess. I have nothing here. Huh? So I can, uh, by God's mercy, I have seen that. So I can turn my attention away from this material world and simply take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. This became his determination. Mm. So, uh, although our uh, birth, our background is not exalted like that Brahmana because we are low class people. Still, we are very proud of our bodies. 
And we try to become as comfortable as we can in this material world. <laughs> Surround ourselves with relatives and friends. And accumulate so many possessions. And in this way, uh, try to enjoy these possessions in the company of our near and dear ones. <laughs> But this position, although everybody uh, is aspiring for this, this position for the soul to be uh, uh, surrounded by matter, by, uh, uh, to be absorbed in matter, is not natural. Mm-hmm. It is never natural, even though we may think that we have become very expert in enjoying matter. Mm. Just like uh, we may like uh, to go horseback riding, riding on the back of a horse. <coughs> Some people, uh, they think this is great fun, great sport. <laughs> <laughs> and they become very expert at it. <laughs> they can jump up on the back of a horse and go galloping off. <laughs> and it's great fun. Or, for a more common example, swimming. Uh, to dive into a nice swimming pool, and splash around. This is also considered great fun. <laughs> and we may become very expert in swimming. <coughs> But, just see, those situations either on the back of a horse or in water, it is not natural. <laughs> Therefore, if you are forced to stay on the back of a horse <laughs> or forced to stay within the water, then even though in the beginning it seems like great fun, after a while... <laughs> it becomes a torment. Uh-huh. becomes very distressing. When one wants to get away. Let me off this horse. <laughs> When can I get out of the water? So, when one finally understands the hopelessness of the attempt to surround oneself with matter and be very expert in enjoying matter, when one actually sees that uh, this, because the relationship is not natural, it must bring distress. Then, one may become what is known as Nibritta Tarsair in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes. So, Tarsair. Tarsair is a form of the word Trishna, which means 
thirst. So this word Trishna is used in the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, 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 for or uh, as a word for uh, material desires. Uh-huh. In the material world, everyone is thirsty. Uh, thirsty for happiness, material happiness. Uh-huh. But because the relationship soul to matter is unnatural, that thirst is never quenched. Srila Prabhupada uh, used to give the example of uh, the mirage in the desert, oasis, the mirage of an oasis. So I'm very thirsty and I look ahead, I'm in the desert, I look ahead and I see between two sand dunes, ah, there's palm trees, ah, there must be water there, let me go. So I'm running through the sand, falling on my face, getting up, running. <laughs> I'm very eager to satisfy my thirst because the sun is beating down so hard on my head. But that oasis is merely a mirage. The more I run after it, the more it is moving ahead of me. Until finally I become exhausted and I die. <laughs> so this is actually what material life is all about. And there is a promise. There is a promise of happiness. But when I pursue that promise, I become disappointed. I'm lost. So this is this is the meaning of Trishna. Uh, to be always thirsty. This is the material condition. To be always thirsty. Where is water? Where is water? Or it means where is pleasure? Uh, where is enjoyment? Where is happiness? But it is hopeless. You'll, you won't find that here in the material world. No pleasure, no happiness. So one who has understood this and who ceases pursuing this uh, false promise of happiness. He's called Nibritta Tarsai. Mm-hmm. His thirst has come to an end. <coughs> uh, and uh, when that happens, one feels great relief, great satisfaction. There's also in Srimad Bhagavatam the narration of uh, a woman named Pingala. Who was a prostitute. So one night, as prostitutes do, she was standing in front of her door uh, and she was trying to attract all the men who were walking past to come in with her and pay her money and enjoy. So she had made herself look very beautiful. 
And she was using all of her feminine charms to attract these men. But none of them were stopping that night. <laughs> so she would see one man coming and she would think, oh, here he is. Uh, he'll stop. Look, he's well dressed. He has lots of money. But he would walk by. And then another man, oh, surely he will stop. He's very young and strong. He probably would like to have a, a nice girlfriend like me. <laughs> But he also walked by. <laughs> so this went on until the middle of the night. So many men, dozens and hundreds of men walked by. And she was, every one of them, she was looking. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> And they would just ignore her. <coughs> so finally, it was about midnight, and she was she became very frustrated. And then she began to think about what she was doing. So her thoughts are recorded in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And they're very nice, very instructive. So she, be, she became completely disgusted with herself, that I'm totally absorbed in this body, and what is this body? Uh, it's a cage of bones and blood and all nasty things. And I'm trying to attract uh, men into sinful activities with me. And in this way, my life is always full of... Uh, Anxiety, distress, illusion. I'm, I'm simply being pushed around by desires which I can never satisfy. Because night after night I'm out here. I'm tired of this. So she went inside closed the door and locked it. And she began to think about Krishna. And she was considering that I am attracted to the male form. Uh, I want to have intimate loving relationship with the male form. But these forms out there on the street, they're all illusory. They're just matter. But Krishna... He is the uh, uh, true, eternal male. Mm-hmm. And he's inviting all conditioned souls to give up Maya and surrender to Him and come back home, back to Godhead with Him and enjoy eternal. So meditating in this way she became very happy. Hmm? She became pure devotee of Krishna. <laughs> so this is the example. Nivritta Tarsaya. When one becomes truly frustrated with material life, then he can surrender to Krishna in one step immediately. 
това означава думата на Гриби в Сайя, когато човек не пое се отвъти от материалния живот, той веднага може да се изгубя на Кришна. So, our, uh, our condition is also just like Pingalas. Our, just like the Srimad Bhagavatam says, uh, referring to this tongue we have, Jivatasi, uh, this uh, tongue is like a, like a prostitute. <coughs> Because just like a, a, a woman, woman in society is supposed to Uh, if she's following the the laws of God, then she is supposed to be a faithful wife, get married, be a faithful wife, uh, uh, perform her her duties to the family very nicely. <coughs> So every woman has that duty. Uh, but when a woman uh, gives up her duty to family and society and becomes a prostitute, hangs around on street corners and stops men, <laughs> then She's, yeah, she becomes scandalous. You see, people talk about such women. Ah, such a, you see. They, anyway, they use so many. <laughs> they have so many dirty words they use for such women. Mm-hmm. So such women can never be respected. Mm-hmm. So similarly, our tongue, jiwa, uh, it also has a duty. Under the laws of God. And that duty is to glorify Krishna. But when the tongue becomes like a prostitute and uh, speaks of uh, every and all nonsense, material thing, then it's called jiwasati. And it means the tongue is like, has become like uh, a Loose woman. So, this is the business of <coughs> practically everyone in the material world. Their senses have become like prostitutes. Running here and there and doing everything except what God intended for these senses to do. Shotavyadini Rajendra, there's a verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Which explains, Shotevyadini Rajendra, Nrinam Santi Sahasra Shaha, Apashyatam Atmatatvam Viheshu Grihamedinam. That uh, human society, materialistic society, they have endless engagement for their senses. And uh, uh, the, of course, the the uh, central point of all 
or the beginning point of all activity is hearing and speaking. Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> uh, so they have they have unlimited, mon- useless, mundane topics to hear about and discuss. Mm-hmm. Uh, these people who spend their time in this way, uh, hearing. Uh, news on radio, uh, reading newspaper, uh, discussing world events or discussing their family problems, etc. All mundane topics. They're apashitam atmatatvam. They're blind to reality. <coughs> They're blind to reality. Atmatatva means reality. <coughs> the truth of the soul, the truth of God. That is reality. That I am spirit soul. I am not the body. And as spirit soul, I am a servant of Krishna. That is what I am. That is my reality. Servant of Krishna. But they are a pashitam. They are blind to this reality. And they just waste their time uh, talking all nonsense. You see, uh, it says... Uh, Shahashra, there are thousands and thousands of topics that Maya provides them. Oh, did you hear this? Oh, and what about that? And they can go 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And uh, their activities are summed up. Griheshu uh, These people are caught. They're trapped in the uh, griha conception of existence. Uh, griha refers to the body. The body is the home of the soul. And then this griha conception, of course, expands to a house, to a family, to bank balance. To material society. And all these things... Uh, beginning with the body and onward, they're all simply facilities for sense gratification. <coughs> so, griheshu griha medinam. So, their intelligence is totally focused on the griha, the body, and all of its uh, external expansions. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because of this, their mentality becomes very crooked, very envious. Because they're so attached to the griha. Uh, so, uh, they make their warm little nest or hole in the wall or whatever it is uh, with uh, those uh, who satisfy their senses, family members and friends. And they're envious of the rest of the world. 
И те се затварят в а, тяхната, тяхното гнездо или къща с тези, които им дадат удоволствие, семейството и завиждат на останалата част от света. And actually they're envious of each other too. Because this so-called love simply depends on momentary sense gratification. As long as he or she is gratifying my senses, oh, I love her. I love you, yes. <laughs> as long as uh, this woman I'm attached to, I have a relationship with, as long as she's looking beautiful according to my conception of beauty, then I love her. <laughs> But let me see her one morning uh, if she gets gets up out of bed and <laughs> looks like that. Then, oh, <coughs> what am I doing with this woman? <laughs> She's getting too old. <laughs> Let me go find a nice, fresh, young one. <laughs> So, ultimately, uh, the Griha Medi, he's envious of his own self. <laughs> Because, he, as we've already explained, he cannot satisfy himself. So, he drives himself mad in the name of trying to enjoy that which cannot be enjoyed. The crazy fool thinks happiness is in a bottle of rakia. <laughs> Now what is really in the bottle of rakia is poison. Alcohol is poison. But because he's envious of his own self, he thinks it is nectar. <laughs> And to be happy, I will drink. <laughs> And then he becomes completely mad. <laughs> And then he uh, hops into his lada. <laughs> and goes driving off <laughs> down the street and smashes into a telephone pole. <laughs> and he's laying there covered with broken glass, bleeding, half dead. One half dead, the other half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> And this should be happiness? <laughs> Is it? That's material life. Torturing oneself in the name of happiness. Because you can't get happiness here. But still they want it, want it, want it. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. <laughs> So, this is disease. This person in such a condition, uh, he's suffering from disease of Maya. So there is a medicine. Huh? Bhava Ausadach, Bhagavatam says. Bhava means the material existence. Ausada means medicine. There is a medicine to cure this disease. Huh? And that 
medicine is the glorification of Krishna. But that medicine uh, is only taken by those who are nivritta tarsair, those who have actually given up this attempt to enjoy matter. Nivritta tarsair, upagiyamana. Bhava Ausaraj, Shotra, Mano Viramat. The Bhagavatam says that those who have ceased, those, those who have become hopeless as far as material sense gratification are concerned, who know that there is no hope, uh, then they turn to hearing and chanting about Krishna with full enthusiasm and thus they taste transcendental pleasure. Mayavari's view of sannyas is quitting. Quitting life. Like a person who decides, now I will quit smoking. A person who smokes three, four packs of cigarettes a day, uh, he's, he's, a, he's, he's wretched, you see, coughing. <laughs> he can't even walk up a flight of stairs. When he gets to the top, he's... <laughs> 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 and of course, it's known. So many diseases uh, come from the smoking. Lung cancer, heart disease, so many things. Such a nasty habit. So out of frustration, someone may say, I quit! No more cigarettes. Uh, but the problem is not actually the cigarettes themselves. The problem is, again, the tongue. The tongue is demanding. I want sense gratification. <laughs> so, because this fool, again, because he's envious of his own self, of being ignorant of the truth, the truth of himself. He therefore took to smoking in the name of pleasure. So if he quits smoking, that doesn't solve the problem of the tongue's demands. <coughs> so, uh, it is seen, people who quit smoking, they have to take up some substitute. And that substitute may even be worse. Uh -huh. So as long as one uh, uh, remains on the material platform, it's impossible to really quit sense gratification. You can only move from one kind to another, to another. So therefore, if one is truly <coughs> frustrated with sense gratification, then he must take the medicine. Yes, now you have lost uh, your interest in the so-called material enjoyment. So now fully focus on hearing and chanting about Krishna and serving Him. 
се ангажира в а, служение, възпяване на Кришна и служението му. This is Baba Osharaj. This will uh, cure the material disease once and for all. By this medicine one uh, attains the transcendental taste of love of Krishna. These senses, this mind, they become purified by hearing and chanting about Krishna and they can experience Krishna, love of Krishna directly. In the Srimad, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Pratyashavagamam dhanyam that susukkam kartamaviyam the bliss of Krishna consciousness is to be experienced directly Uh, we read in the scriptures uh, about uh, how Krishna consciousness is an ocean of transcendental pleasure. Mm-hmm. How material sense gratification uh, is is nothing is nothing compared to the bliss of Krishna consciousness. So this is to be directly experienced by everyone. But this is how it's done. One must engage in the hearing and chanting of Krishna's glories, serving Krishna with full attention with not even uh, one milliwatt of mental energy focused on Maya. The energy of the senses and mind uh, must be completely detached from material sense gratification. And that energy then transferred over to a devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting. Then one is a real sannyas. Sannyasi. So, Sri Sri Gornitai are very kind to us here in the Sophia Temple. Because they have placed us in these difficult circumstances which force us uh, to focus our full energy on their service with no hope for sense gratification. (laughs) Yes. We should take this as a great mercy. Uh Uh, Because we are so much attached to sense gratification, their lordships they're forcing us to give it up to give it up <laughs> so uh, but that doesn't mean that we should become uh, dry and bitter that oh my life is has no pleasure no happiness <laughs> I have to live here in this 
cold house. There's no. Sometimes there's no water. <laughs> Everything's very difficult here. No, don't think like that. <laughs> Chant Hare Krishna, dance in ecstasy. Thank Shishi Gornitai for taking away all your sense gratification. <laughs> and if we dedicate ourselves in this way to the service of the Lord, then we will know what real happiness is. Actually, you're very, very fortunate. <laughs> no, it's a fact. It's no joke. <laughs> Because uh, uh, Queen Kunti, she, uh, in her prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam, she says how uh, persons who are uh, well situated in material existence, uh, they have a difficult time to chant the holy name of the Lord sincerely. Uh, she says that to uh, chant the holy name of the Lord uh, sincerely with full concentration, one must be a kinchana gochara. That means one can have no other shelter, uh, no other engagement than Krishna consciousness. So, if one is too comfortable in this body, Janmai, she, she gives a list. Janmai Shwarya Shruta Shibir. If one is very satisfied thinking that uh, my birth here as a Bulgarian is a very good birth. I'm very happy. Bulgaria is the greatest country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and Aishwarya, if I'm uh, very satisfied with my so-called opulence, you see, that I have a citizen watch, <laughs> I have a Mickey Mouse hat, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the nonsense <laughs> possessions I may have. And uh, I have some education and I have some bodily beauty. So if I'm very satisfied, very comfortable with these things, she says, then uh, one cannot sincerely chant the Holy Name. <coughs> so Shushi Gornitai are forcing us to give up all this nonsense and to give them all of our energy because they made everything so difficult <laughs> to perform uh, service to the Lord now requires that we have to give all of our energy so that at the end of the day We just take rest and fall into a dreamless sleep. <laughs> This is the perfection. Huh? The, the karmis, the materialists, <laughs> Uh, they're expending all their energy pursuing sense gratification. 
In the material world, it's go, 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 work, 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 harder, harder, faster, faster. <laughs> That's their maha mantra. <laughs> harder, faster, harder, faster, 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 harder, harder. <laughs> <laughs> And this, you see, one is in the material world is working so enthusiastically, giving all his energy to sense gratification. He's considered a good man. He's a first-class citizen. Give, congratulate, shake his hand, give him a medal, put his picture in the newspaper. He's a great guy. <laughs> And when he drops dead, put a big stone over his head. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone will remember what a fine man he was. He worked so hard every day, and finally his heart just stopped. <laughs> so, this we should be working equally as hard for Krishna. Give every drop of energy to Krishna. Because then surely we will go to Krishna. But if we're very comfortable in this body, you see, thinking everything's all right, and yes, yes, I also serve Krishna too. <laughs> Sometimes I'm serving Krishna. <laughs> then our concentration is divided. And who knows from the Bhagavad Gita second chapter, what Krishna says about those whose concentration is divided. Who remembers? Yes? They have no from from determination. Yes. The resolute determination for pure devotional service cannot arise in them. Samadhau na vidyate. They cannot become Krishna conscious. That's also what Prahlad Maharaj says in that famous verse, Matir na Krishna parata satova nitto vipatyeta griha He calls these persons griha vrata in their heart. See, although they may, they may appear to be interested in Krishna consciousness, in the core of their heart, they are griha vrata. They are dedicated uh, to again the griha, the bodily conception. And thus, Matir na Krishna, they, uh, Krishna never appears in their intelligence. That, that means, one meaning is, they can never understand Krishna. Another meaning is, of that same term, Matir na Krishna, is that uh, they're always impure. You see, Krishna consciousness means purified intelligence, buddhi yoga. Uh, the intelligence purified by yoga, purified by being linked to Krishna. So one 
who is situated in this Buddha Yoga, whose intelligence is linked to Krishna, uh, because the intelligence is the uh, uh, director of the mind and the senses. That means mind and senses, they're automatically uh, engaged in Krishna's service. Uh, the, uh, the mind and senses n uh, uh, understand their existence to be only to serve Krishna. There's no other understanding. So for one situated in this Buddha Yoga, there's no question of Maya, of being attracted to sense gratification. But for one who is Matirna Krishna, who's, uh, in whose intelligence Krishna has not appeared, then his uh, intelligence is always uh, subject to impure desires. So even if he tries to chant Hare Krishna, to serve Krishna, uh, he cannot dedicate himself fully because his intelligence is agitated by lust. Hmm. He, he may try to serve Krishna, but inevitably he's drawn back uh, to so-called sense pleasure. So, Matirna Krishna Paratasvatova, those who are determined in the core of their heart to remain in the bodily conception of life, they can never become purified. So, Nibritta Tar Sire, one has to give up this thirst for sense gratification. Give it up, kick it out. It's useless. It's hopeless. Uh, but, as we've explained, one cannot just say, I quit. One has to do something positive immediately. Yes, you take these senses which were so long in, engaged in sense gratification. Now you've realized that's frustration. Now immediately engage them in Krishna's service, beginning with the hearing and chanting. And do it with full enthusiasm, full power, no hesitation. Hmm. We should, in this way, we should be determined to go back to Godhead. That's the point of this verse. Yavanti Brahman, he saw, I have nothing except the lotus feet of Krishna. So that is sannyas. That is happiness. That's reality. <laughs> That's simple reality, that we have nothing except the lotus feet of Krishna. <laughs> That's true for everyone. And those who, who cannot see this, those who are blind, how unfortunate they are. Always disturbed by so many desires that cannot be fulfilled. 
Винаги възпитание от толкова желание, които никой не може да бъде изпълнен. Are there any questions? Yes. Ага. When we, due to the circumstances, are not, uh, it is not possible to follow the rules, for example, the rules of opportunity. Uh, uh, when I cook, uh, before, um, uh, I was not, I was not uh, taking a bath because there was no mm-hmm. water. Is that uh, an offense? Sri Sri Gornitai, do not accept offenses. <laughs> they accept our loving service. They do not consider offenses. So, uh, if our service is simply full of offenses to Shishi Gornitai, then there's no reciprocation. So they do not accept the offenses, but they also do not accept the service, because there is no service, there's only offenses. <laughs> so, but if there is loving service, service rendered in love, there may be also some offenses, as Mahababa Srub Maharaji indicates, because of the necessary circumstances, unavoidable circumstances. Sri Sri Gornitai do not, they're not concerned with those offenses. They're only concerned with the love and devotion. So, make sure that your service is done in love and devotion. Hmm? You see, what their lordships are doing are teaching us that uh, there is something more to devotional service than just uh, external appearances. Just as we heard in the purport, uh, there's something more to sannyas than just external appearances. So if someone is supposed to, he's supposed to render service on the altar. And he does every, he's able to do everything uh, uh, externally very nicely. Take, you know, be clean, take bath, have the clean cloth, make the offering according to all the regulations. But the result of all this activity is simply that he's very proud that I am a very good servant of the Lord. Just see, I do everything so nicely. I am great. <laughs> see? Then, this, this service is hardly pleasing to Krishna. <clears throat> Но 
последствия се възгордява, като си мисли, аз толкова много, толкова добре извършвам това служение, аз съм велик, но на това служение едва ли ще го допреши. Actually, it is offensive. Всъщност, то е оскърбително. So it will not be accepted by the Lord. So therefore, their lordships are forcing us to be humble. They put us into a desperate situation. So we must desperately uh, try to render some loving service to their lordships despite all the difficulties, all the discrepancies. And of course we your your concern is very good that uh, we Yes, we want to uh, render service to their lordships according to the proper standard. That is our desire, but when it is not possible, still we must serve them. Just like uh, when Sudama Vipra uh, went to see Lord Krishna, he wanted to make an offering, but he had nothing except some chipped, old chipped rice. But uh, still he brought it along, tied in his cloth, although it was a very, very poor offering to make. And, and when he met, when he actually had darshan of Lord Krishna and Dwarka, he was so ashamed that he couldn't bring himself to take out the chipped rice from his cloth. So Krishna reached in and said, What have you got there? Oh, it is so nice. He began to eat it. Ah, oh, this tastes like nectar. Lord Krishna was so uh, grateful to this humble offering of the Sadama Vipa Brahmana. Why? Because he had uh, brought this along in utter uh, humility, uh, with no duplicity, no tricky motive behind it. It was all he had. Question is yes, it's clearly explained that way in the purport. Uh, purport to the verse which describes how Juru Maharaj and his mother went back to God. Okay, the answer to the first verse is also yes. Sorry, the answer to the first question is also yes. That we can see practically in the Sankirtan devotees, those who are distributing Prabhupada's books, they're having to undergo, undergo from material vision uh, great discomfort, great austerity, especially now in this Christmas marathon season. But by enthusiasm for the mission of book distribution, uh, they're not concerned with the cold weather and uh, the sometimes unpleasant persons they meet. Mm. They are transcendental, mm. fixed in the mission. That's 
practical proof. For who in their right mind <laughs> among the materialists? Of course, the materialists are not in, they're never in their right mind, but I'm just in a joke, joking way using this expression. What materialistic person uh, would ever even dream of standing out on a snowy street corner with a armload of books, handing them out like this to different people, going, books, books on God, books on, on Krishna, a blue God from India. <laughs> See, what materialist could even imagine doing such a thing for one second in his life? Impossible. No way. Тези, които са с ума си, материалисти, разбира се, това е шега, тези материалисти дори не могат да си представят за секунда такова нещо да стоят в някой ъгъл с книги за Бога, за Кришна, за синия Бог от Индия и да предлагат тези книги на хората. Това е невъзможно. I never do it. But one who is enthusiastic for Srila Prabhupada's book distribution mission, uh, he penetrates uh, beyond this barrier of bodily demands and uh, sense agitation and comes to a platform of uh, real bliss which lights up the bliss lights up the Sankatan Hori, lights up his eyes and his smile. He becomes like a searchlight in the midst of the darkness of Kaliuga. So attractive, just like a light at night attracts all so many insects. The <laughs> <laughs> Sankatan uh, he attracts at least at least pious souls who come in contact with him. They think, oh, what a wonderful person. He's so happy. Yes, if he's selling those books, I must read one. It must be good, because he looks so nice, so happy. Благодарение на ентусиазма си за тази мисия на Шива Пропада на разпространяването на книги, Санкиртан Премо Даймите надхвърлят тези свои желания за сетивно наслаждение и те достигат тази платформа на блаженство, което всъщност ги осветява и те изглеждат толкова щастливи, че просто карат хората да поне привличат тези благочестиви личности, които ви казват колко хубав човек, колко е щастлив. Поне трябва да се взема една от тези книги. Is divine grace, you should have to manage